In this video, we'll look at how to use the solubility table. So this is the solubility table here, and it's very useful when we're trying to figure out if substances will be soluble in water, if they'll dissolve in water. For example, we use this in net ionic equations, or when we're trying to predict whether double displacement reactions will happen. So on the chart, you'll see that we have positive ions here called cations on the left, and on the top, we have negative ions, anions. And we have both monatomic ions, just one atom, and then we have polyatomic ions as well. So let's find the solubility of a few different common compounds to give you some practice with the solubility table. So for our first compound, let's look at NaCl, sodium chloride. You can look at the charges on the periodic table. Sodium's in group one. It has a one plus charge. Chlorine has a one minus. Let's find sodium here with our cations. Here's sodium and then Chlorine, the chloride ion, is right here. So we go over and down, and we see that S there. That S means that it's soluble in water. When we put this in water, the plus and the minus will break apart, it'll dissolve, and we say it'll become aqueous. Aqueous means it's dissolved in water, and you can write a little AQ. So sodium chloride, soluble in water. So pause for a moment and give this one a try. See if calcium nitrate is soluble in water. Calcium, it has a two plus charge, and then the nitrate ion is one minus. We have two of them. So when we look at our table, we find calcium here. We find nitrate. We go over and down, and you can see that S again. So calcium nitrate, soluble in water. We write it'll AQ for aqueous. It'll dissolve in water. Pause and give this one a try calcium sulfate. So we have calcium, group two on the periodic table, two plus sulfates, those are two minus. So let's see, here's our calcium again, and way over here is sulfate. So we go down, and we're going over, and now we have an SS. SS means that this is slightly soluble in water. Just a little bit of it will dissolve. So we can't write aqueous. What we end up writing, at least for net ionic equations and for double displacement reactions, when it's slightly soluble, we consider that to be a solid, and we write an S after this. So don't be confused. When you see the table, the S means it's soluble. But when we write a little S in parentheses, that means this is a solid. It'll be sitting at the bottom of the test tube. Let's take a look at another one, copper 2 hydroxide. Pause and give it a try. Hydroxide, that is going to be a 1 minus. We have two of them, so that means we'll have to have a 2 plus here. That's why it's copper 2 hydroxide. We find copper here, and we're looking for hydroxide. So we'll go over and down, and we see I. I means that it's insoluble. It will not dissolve in water, or only a really tiny bit will. So we're going to put S because this is going to be a solid. You'll have your solid copper 2 hydroxide. You'll drop it in water and it'll sink to the bottom. Nothing will really happen. Pause and give this one a try. Calcium oxide. So again, calcium, group two, two plus. Oxygen has that two minus charge. So we can find our calcium here, and here's our oxide. That's our O2 minus. We go over, and we see an R. An R means that these two will react. Actually, when you put calcium oxide in water, you'll get a chemical reaction and new substances will be formed. So this won't dissolve with water. It'll react and create new substances. That's why we have the R here. So that's how we use the solubility table to figure out whether a substance will dissolve in water. If it does, it'll be soluble, and we say that it's aqueous. Note that there are some patterns here. If you look at this table, all of the nitrates are soluble. So if you see a nitrate, something with NO3-, minus, it's going to be soluble. Chlorates, too, very soluble. And then going across, ammonium, almost all of the ammonium compounds, they're going to be soluble. There's something called the solubility rules. It's kind of the generalizations of all these trends. Teachers will often ask you to memorize the solubility rules. There's a link in the description and at the end of this video to help you do that. But the solubility table is useful, and there are much larger tables that have more compounds. If you're given a compound that's not here, you may need to go to a larger table and look it up there. This is Dr. B with how to use the solubility table and thanks for watching.